The only real hope and change you'll ever get is from God. It's going to come from the Lord or it's not going to come at all. It's going to come when you admit that you can't do it and that you've got to have His help. This last day movement is a satanic diversion, the return of Baal worship. Baal was a Canaanite deity worshipped by many cultures in the ancient Near East, including the Israelites. He was considered a god of fertility, rain, and agriculture, and his worship involved rituals that were often sexually charged and involved the sacrifice of animals. The worship of Baal was a constant struggle for the Israelites because it presented a direct challenge to their faith in the one true God. Despite the fact that God had clearly commanded them to worship Him alone, the Israelites were often tempted to turn to the gods of their neighbors for help and protection. One of the reasons why the worship of Baal was so attractive to the Israelites was because that it appeals to the works of the flesh. Baal worship involved indulging in physical pleasure and satisfying one's desires. Furthermore, Baal worship was often associated with the fertility of the land, and the people believed that by performing certain rituals, they could ensure the prosperity of their crops and livestock. This appealed to their materialistic desires for wealth and abundance. However, the worship of Baal was also a religion of sin. The rituals involved in Baal worship often involved sexual immorality, drunkenness and sacrifices which were considered abominations in the eyes of the Lord. The Israelites' participation in these rituals not only represented a rejection of their faith, but also demonstrated a lack of moral integrity. We are living in an age where pleasure-seeking has become the norm. People today seem to live only for themselves and what feels good to them. In fact, pleasure has become an idol in our society, something that people worship and pursue at all costs. The pursuit of pleasure has been around since the beginning of time. The pursuit of pleasure is nothing new. This is one of the reasons why the Israelites pursued Baal worship. The pursuit of pleasure is nothing new. However, in recent years, it has become more and more prevalent, and the dangers of pleasure-seeking have become even more apparent. The verse, Proverbs chapter 6, verse 27, Can a man scoop fire into his lap without his clothes being burned? is a rhetorical question used to illustrate the inevitable consequences of certain actions. The proverb is meant to convey the message that if someone engages in a dangerous or harmful activity, they should expect to suffer the consequences. That is the truth. If you play with sin, it will get you every time. It is impossible to live a life of pleasure-seeking and indulging in sin and not pay the consequences. This is not popular preaching, but it's the truth. However, mankind doesn't like hearing the truth because truth is light, and people don't want light shined on their sins. Why? John chapter 3, verse 19. And this is the condemnation, that light is come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. People do not like the light of truth because men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. Sin, Satan, and this world can take you to such a pleasurable place where all you experience is pleasure and the illusion of joy and happiness. The book of 1 John chapter 2, verses 15 through 17. In these verses, John warns us about the dangers of loving the world and the things that are in the world. He reminds us that the love of the world is not compatible with the love of God. Specifically, John highlights the allure of pleasure that is so easy for sinful man to love. Let us read these verses together. 1 John chapter 2, verses 15-17 through 17. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doth the will of God abideth forever. There are things in this world that appeal to the carnal man. There are things in this world that allure the natural man. There are things in this world that are easy for this human body to love. I could stand here today and tell you that there is no pleasure or enjoyment in fornicating with multiple people, or that there is no pleasure in adultery, or that there is no pleasure in sex, drugs, and all of the sinful allures of this world. However, if I was to say that, I would be lying to you. There are people who are in this world who are doing these things, and they are having the time of their life. They are having so much fun and enjoyment 
indulging in these things. However, that right there is the deceptive nature of sin and pleasure seeking. It lures you into a false sense of security, that everything is okay, that a holy God is not angry at my rejection of the Lord Jesus Christ and my sinful lifestyle. It lures you into a false sense of security. I have been pleasure seeking for years. I'm still here. I am healthy. I have money in the bank. I am enjoying life. However, the Bible says, Romans chapter 6, verse 23, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The payday of sin always comes. Galatians chapter 6, verse 7, Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27, And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. There is a judgment fast approaching. People forget how quickly judgment can befall on us. To illustrate how quickly judgment can fall on an individual, allow me to introduce Belshazzar, a king who was known for his love of pleasure and his false sense of security. Belshazzar was the king of Babylon, a powerful city that was known for its riches and its military might. But despite his position of power, Belshazzar lived his life in pursuit of pleasure ignoring the warning signs of danger that were right in front of him. And this is what pleasure can do to a person. It can blind them of the danger that is literally staring them in the face. He was living it up and living in pleasure, eating, drinking, and being merry, not knowing that very night was his last night on this earth. And right now, Throughout the streets of your city and your nation, there are people just like Belshazzar who are indulging in pleasure, who are worshiping at the altar of pleasure, not knowing that tonight is their last night on this earth. Right now, throughout the streets of your city and your nation, the alcohol is flowing and sins of lust and passion are being committed, not knowing that tonight is their last night on this earth. Without a care, and concern for judgment, not knowing that judgment for them is literally minutes away. They too are living in a false sense of security that only pleasure provides. Do you know a person can fall in love with the pleasure of sin so much that they will hear the gospel message and know that the gospel message is true but still reject it? because they are in love so much with the pleasure of sin? You have heard the parable of the sower. What happened to the seed that fell among the thorns? When it grew up, it was choked up. Now look at the explanation for what choked up the seed of the Word of God in people's lives. Luke chapter 8 verse 14. The seeds that fell among thorns stands for those who hear, but as they go on their way, they are choked by life's worries, riches, and pleasures, and they do not mature. What choked it up? Life's worries, riches, and pleasures. There are people who are hearing the gospel message, but before it even has the chance to bring forth fruit, the devil brings along the pleasure of life to choke the gospel message out of a person's life. I grew up with a young gentleman when I was in youth ministry, and anytime he got serious with God or made an effort to see the face of the Lord, an attractive young lady would walk into his life, and he would stop attending church and would be so intoxicated with the young lady. This happened time and time again in his life, and I witnessed it. I have no way of proving this, but it was almost as if Satan would plant people to come into his life at the moment he was about to start his Christian walk. I remember a preacher who once was approached by a man after preaching a sermon. The man told him, I believe everything you are saying, but I couldn't be a Christian because I would not be able to stay with one woman my whole life. That is a man who was in love with fornication and the pleasure of fornication. As we read in the book of Daniel, Belshazzar threw a great feast for a thousand of his lords and drank wine with them while an army was at his gates, feasting at a time where he should have been preparing for war, feasting at a time when the enemy was at his doorstep. He chose to indulge in pleasure rather than prepare for the army at his gates. He even brought out the holy vessels from the temple in Jerusalem, which had been taken as spoils of war by his predecessor, King Nebuchadnezzar. Belshazzar and his guests drank from these vessels, defiling them in the process. While they were indulging in their revelry, a hand appeared and wrote on the wall. Belshazzar was terrified. Finally, Daniel was brought before the king, and he explained that the writing meant 
that Belshazzar's days were numbered, and his kingdom would be given to the Medes and Persians. Despite this warning, Belshazzar continued to live his life as if nothing had changed. He did not strengthen his army or prepare for the impending invasion. Instead, he continued to seek pleasure, even on the night that his city was taken by the Medes and Persians. As the enemy army was at his gates, Belshazzar was feasting with his lords and his concubines. It was this false sense of security that ultimately led to Belshazzar's death. He was so focused on his own pleasure that he ignored the danger that was right in front of him. He did not prepare for the inevitable, and as a result, he was caught off guard and he lost his life that night. Although we are living in a world that is focusing on the worship of Baal, the worship of pleasure, you do not have to live that way. Allow me to tell you the greatest pleasure that Jesus Christ guarantees those who believe in him. The prosperity gospel will tell you that Jesus Christ promises a life of pleasure in this life, that all your dreams will come true in this life. You will be 100% healthy and whole all the time. I am sorry to tell you that's not what Jesus promises. Look at Christian martyrs throughout history. Throughout the corridors of history, there is the blood of Christians who have died for their beliefs. Read Fox's Book of Martyrs and you will see thousands and thousands of Christians who were martyrs for Christ. Each of them have the greatest pleasure, one that can only come from Jesus Christ, and that is eternal life. John chapter 11, verses 25 through 26. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believe in me shall never die. Believest thou this? You have never experienced pleasure, my friend, until you have security in Jesus Christ. Do you understand the pleasure of knowing where you are going when you die? To be able to sleep at night knowing that I have eternal life, that brings peace. Unbelievers are petrified of what is on the other side of this world. However, believers in Christ look forward to that glorious day they will see their Redeemer. Believers look forward to crossing over to the other side, while unbelievers fear that day. Believers look forward to that glorious day they will see their Messiah, when they see Him who died for them. Words cannot describe the pleasure that is in store for those who will be in heaven. Your imagination does not have the power to imagine the wonder and glory and splendor of heaven. Our language does not have the words to describe how you will feel when you arrive into heaven. Just to realize, I am there, and for all of eternity, God will be your God. Also in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers. It takes the grace of God to change us, folks. How can you be saved if you're not willing to repent? And the Lord Jesus Christ said, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish.